Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy, Jack the on here. Welcome to another video of perks for... Well, this time, last time was for perks against the killers. This time, we're going to be doing perks for the killers. So, before this video starts, I wanted to say something. Because this is going to be a great announcement, and I hope you guys do stay there. But, today, later today, uh, around 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, we're going to be... We're going to be freaking... We're going to be doing a tournament. If you, I want you guys to head over to Twitch, go uh, Mr. Fuzzy Fun Times. I want you guys to go. I'm gonna leave his Twitch right here. Go ahead and follow him because he's gonna be live streaming the entire thing. I'm gonna be uploading it to YouTube, but not as a live stream like I did last time or 10 months ago. If you guys do remember the 10 months ago, my sad, sad Freddy gameplay, this time it's gonna be a lot more edited so you only see the games of the tournament and not have like an hour to an hour and a half of uh, just full on front screen. But if you guys do want to watch it live, I'm uh, me, Ted, um, Mr. Misanthropy, and or my good friend Toxic Blade that you guys know a lot of, we are all gonna be in the tournament. So head over to Twitch if you guys want to watch it live. If not, then wait until I believe 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time so that we can so you'll be able to see it a lot more edited. But that'll be like two, three hours, maybe even four hours after it's all done. But that's what I wanted to get out of the way, guys. I do hope you uh, enjoy, and please be there. We would love to see you guys. And uh, Go ahead, give uh, Mr. Fuzzy Funtime a follow. He'd really appreciate it, and that'd be coming from me. But anyways, let's get into this video. So into this video, I'm going to be leafing up all the times right here for what killer is going to be at what specific timing and what perks I'm going to be going for them if you want to go to a specific killer. But for now, I'm going to be going through the killers of Trapper all the way through Deathlinger right here. All the way to Third Singer. And they all have their own specific bells. Now remember, this is my opinion. So if you guys can you guys can disagree, it's fine. You guys can make suggestions. Go ahead and comment down below any suggestions you make. I will always be reading in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll be responding to as much of you guys as I can. But anyways, hope you guys uh, get to that killer, or uh, get to the specific killer. If you stay through the entire length of the video, I love you. Now, let's get into this video. Our first killer is the Trapper, and this perk build I have is kind of popular for a lot of Trapper mains. Now, I'm not a Trapper main in the slightest, but I've played Trapper a crap ton. One of the best perks on Trapper is Save the Best for Last. What Save the Best for Last does is, if someone, if someone gets caught in a trap, like um, if, a, if a survivor who's not your obsession gets caught in the trap, you can smack, smack them down and that gives you one token. Save the Best for Last, Paris up. Accidentally press circle. Say the best for last pairs a lot up with padded jaws, which what padded jaws does is if they get trapped, then it takes two smacks to down them. If you, if they get out themselves, they are not conflicted going into the injured state. They will stay healthy or injured if they are already injured. But the reason why it comes to go with the say the best for last is because you can smack them twice and get two stacks. If it is your obsession, you can pick them up and lose no stacks, which is really good. Corrupt intervention. Now, why Corrupt Intervention is on Trapper, since uh, Ruin was changed, when speaking about Ruin, I heard that the devs are thinking about changing it back to the old Ruin. I can't say for sure, and there's no uh, uh, signifying th way of saying that they are, but it's, it's, a, it's a thought right now, and they're thinking about it. So there's no yeses, there's no nos, but it's uh, hope. But for a reason, for now, Corrupt Intervention, and you're going to be seeing this perk a lot through the, a, lot of, a lot of the builds, because it's either Corrupt or Pop Goes the Weasel that you might as well bring, or both, if you if you uh, want. But Corrupt Intervention, because Trapper's main flaw is preparation. He needs to go around, pick up traps, and he starts off with no add-ons, and with no add-ons, he only holds one bear trap. Just one. So, and if you go one, and you only have one bear trap, there's like, I think, 10 or 12 probably less than traps around the game that you're gonna have to go in individually pick up and they could be in the corner of the mask they could be closer to you but you're not gonna be able to get to every single trap unless you have more than one bag uh, trap in your hand now i'm all ears this is a perk i love on trapper why I put I'm all ears on is every time I'm in the middle of chasing a survivor, whether they're survive, uh, they're injured or healthy, what uh, it always helps me end the chase so much more faster whenever I'm playing as a uh, trapper. And of course, we got thanatophobia, so that when I do injure someone, it adds more uh, speed regression up to a maximum of 60%, depending on how many people are uh, injured. Of course, this one perk right here can be switched out for maybe barbecue and chili, sloppy butcher, uh, overcharge, brutal strength, whatever the hell you want. But th again, this is my choice in build. 
The add-ons I would probably run with him are would most likely be the uh, Trapper Gloves and Trapper Sack. These are the two I love running on him. If not these, it'd probably be Trapper Bag and Trapper Trap Setters. If not, not even even if I don't have these, I would go for fastening tools, setting tools. Not together though, but one of those, or like fat setting tools, stitch bag, fastening tools, stitch bag. I love putting down a trap extremely fast. That is one of the best things you can do as trapper. We put down a trap and leave immediately. The faster you put down the trap, the better it is for you. Now, next killer is Wraith. Why I did the well, okay, so I put Sloppy Butcher on for Wraith, and why I did that is because Wraith is one of those killers that can get an easy first hit, uh, like an easy surprise attack on a survivor, or like on, a, on an unsuspecting survivor, which is great. So Sloppy Butcher puts them injured, and uh, now Pop goes the Weasel. If you do hook that, if you do commit to chasing that survivor and you grab him and hook him, then boom, you can uh, go hit down a generator for 25% of its total progression for the next minute, which is great. Play with your food is is almost essential on uh it's all it's pretty much essential. You have to have it on Wraith if you don't plan on running Windstorm add-ons, which Windstorm add-ons right here increase the movement speed of him when he's uh quite when he's uh cloaked. There we go. So I, the best way to do this is if you get into a chase with your obsession and you go cloaked. Boom, you got one stack. Do that three times and then either go find someone else or chase down your obsession. And now corrupt intervention so that gens don't get popped a lot, and uh, or they come survivors come closer to you, which is extremely great. And remember, this is only a plague perk, and you only have to level her up to I think level 40 for this. So if you guys don't have plague level 40 or you haven't bought this yet, then go ahead and do that right now because this perk is going to be very essential for for now. The next healer is going to be Hillbilly. Now, Infectious Fright and Barbecue and Chili are probably one of the most common perks to bring on Billy. Infectious Fright is if you down someone into the dying state, whether it's with your uh, M1 attack or your chainsaw, it <clears throat> within your terror radius, which Billy has a terror radius of 32, anybody in that 32 terror radius will scream for 6 seconds. And you'll, or they'll scream and give you lo your, their location for 6 seconds. Now that is also a plague perk, and it is extremely good on Billy because it gives you a lot of choices. You can either leave the person on the ground and go chase someone or the two people that are uh, there are however many people in your terror radius that screamed, or you can hook them and see who's farther far enough away. Which these perks together on Billy go so well because if someone's further than 40 meters, you can easily you can either decide to chainsaw over there or not. If so, if you don't see any one out of the, the terror radius or out of the 40 meters you're gonna decide to stay around because they're probably trying to get the save now enduring and spirit fury are also two perks that go extremely well together with uh, Billy if you get stunned while uh, if you get stunned while revving up your chainsaw you can pick it back up almost to where you left it off and break that pallet and for spirit fury if you get smacked twice or if you uh, break two pallets then it becomes active the next time you are stunned the pallet automatically breaks these are extremely amazing on Billy the two add-ons I'd probably run on Billy would be Carver Tuning Guide and the Thompson's Mix. If not these two, then minus the Thompson Mix and Primer Bulb or backwards. I love speed add-ons. I love even uh freaking Spike Boots. I'd run these two as well. The Bi Billy is just has a lot of amazing options, but he has a lot of flaws too. Like uh, I don't know why Doom Engravings. I know Doom Engravings make up his speed and decrease his charge time, but Half the time, it doesn't really matter if you're getting from one place to another, as long as you're always... Mostly, when I rev up my chainsaw, it's to get someone who is extremely close to me. So, Doom Engravings are pretty much worthless then. B Grim Chain and Rusted Chain are pretty much worthless unless you know that you can hit your <clears throat> chainsaws extremely well. But that's the build I would have for Billy. If you guys have any uh, ch suggestions, changes, or comments, leave it down below. I'm always reading. Now next is Nurse. Nurse is probably the most uh, the most thought killer to have. Nurse is calling Thanatophobia and Sloppy Butcher. We put on Corrupt so that gens don't get done immediately. Sloppy so that if we do find someone, we can smack them. Thanatophobia. 
All right, and Sloppy Butcher makes them heal slower. Phonautophobia also makes them heal slower, and uh, the more people injured, the slower they go. And then Nurse is calling, so that, and with Nurse only having a 32 meter, anybody who's basically in her terror radius, she'll be able to see. So it would be best to probably take off Phonautophobia for, um, what's that perk called? For monitoring abuse, there we go. And, uh, sloppy, and uh, sloppy Butcher, or you could even take out Sloppy Butcher, which is fine, no matter what you do. The This surprises a lot of people, but the two add-ons I would run on her nurse would be Spasmodic Breath and Kata Katatonic Boy's Treasure. Either that or um, the Wooden Horse. These two add-ons are extremely well, or even the Pocket Watch. Things that make your blink go extremely farther or uh, like decrease the fatigue, like what this does and the Wooden Horse does. I, I love those perks on, uh, I love those add-ons on Nurse. I don't play Nurse as much as I want to, because high ranks, people gen rush and all that. But, this is what I would run on Nurse. If you guys have any suggestions, changes, or comments about this, go ahead and comment down below. I will always be reading. Now comes Miss Hag. The one killer that is the most fun to play with, but can also get you screwed up the worst ways. So... A lot of people are kind of, you may look at this bit and be like, okay, J Jack, what the hell did you do? Well, Corrupt Intervention, of course, blocks out the three farthest generators for two minutes, which is great, with Hag being slower and our terror radius being uh, only 24 meters. What Monitor and Abuse does, it is extremely great on Hag. Why it's great on Hag is because it minuses her terror radius by eight, leaving her at only 16, I believe. <clears throat> yeah, 16. <laughs> Sorry, but it only keeps her at 16 meters of terror radius, and that really makes survivors like a uh, a lot more jumpy when they see her coming at her. Surprisingly, the uh, but uh, because it gives her more essential of placing her traps and surprising survivors, which is amazing. And survivors don't expect uh, a trap extre uh, anywhere close to them since they will not be hearing a uh, large terror radius, which is great. Make Your Choice is absolutely amazing. It pairs well with Pop Goes the Weasel. But what Make Your Choice does is if you do manage to hook a survivor, the, the what you can do is you can grab, is you, uh, you can go far away for uh, 32 meters. As soon as you go far, far if someone uh, pops your trap and takes them off the hook, you can immediately uh, go there, down them, and there's an instant down right there because of Make Your Choice being affected for 60 seconds, which exposes the survivor who took off the survivor. So, Make Your Choice is amazing on Hag, because you can be as far as you want, and with add-ons that increase her distance of, trans of uh, teleporting to the trap, it is amazing on Hag. Now, of course, Pop Goes the Weasel, another perk that you can either uh, keep or get rid of because of Corrupt Intervention, but it is another perk that if you hear a, uh, a generator getting done, quickly hit it after you hook a survivor and go find someone else. It is that easy, but it, but it also isn't uh, the hardest. It's not the easiest, but it's also not the hardest. The two add-ons I would run on her would probably be Dried Cicada, Rusty Shackles, or Dried Cicada, and Dragonfly Wings. <clears throat> now, why I would run these is because they both increase the distance of where she can teleport to her traps. If anything, I would probably take off uh, Dried Cicada, put on a Mint Rag, and Rusty Shackles, and boom. Any time someone, if someone activates the trap, the uh, it does not spawn a hack phantasm, and the survivor has no notification of uh, affecting it, and I can teleport there at will, but and no matter where I am on the map, I can teleport there, which is amazing. But this is what this is a build I would run on hag if I wanted to be extremely toxic, which you guys know me for being a toxic Jolteon. <laughs> but let's go on to the next killer, Doctor. So now, what Doctor does is his power, Carter Spark, it really messes with the skill checks, which is a, what, if you have great perks that mess with skill checks like his power does, you will destroy teams, survivor friends or not. So like perks like Overcharge, where if you kick a generator, which works very well at Pop, and um, just his lullaby, if you kick a generator, the next time that the survivor hits, they have to hit a skill check. They if they have a, if they miss it, uh, immediately five percent gone. 
with um, Huntress's Lullaby, that's an extra 6%, which equals 11%. If you kick the generator with Pop Goes the Weasel, that's 25%. Add all that together, that is 36% of the generator gone, because, and especially if the, uh, that, if the survivor um, hit. Or miss the skill check. If it hit, if they hit the skill check, it's that's 31% uh, of it gone, which is still extremely well. Hunter's Loaded Lullaby affects the the amount of time you uh, hit a uh, hook a survivor. You get stacks, and um, the amount of stacks you get, the harder skill checks get until the totem is broken. And of course, corrupt intervention, which makes the generators that are farther from you not <clears throat> not get worked on for two minutes. The add-ons I would run on him would be Iridescent Queen and High Stimulus Electrode. If not, uh, take off Iridescent Queen and put on Restraint Carter's Notes. That would have, This would probably be a, a build I would run on Doctor, which Doctor is so much fun to play, but I have destroyed teams as him. I've been destroyed by teams with playing Doctor. I made people giving up on Doctor. I'm sure you guys have done everything I've done as well. So there's not really much of a surprise and with doctors rework. He is extremely scary especially on Larry's map With his uh, double power, but anyways, this is the this is the perk build I would run on doctor If you guys have any suggestions comment down below and changes at comments go ahead and comment down below. I'm always reading Now next Next is Myers, and you guys know me for being a Myers main. The first perk I would put on Myers would be Pop Goes the Weasel and Save the Best for Last. With Sloppy Butcher as well. Because Sloppy Butcher, Myers is also another killer who's able to get those easy one hits. So Sloppy Butcher really comes into play. Pop Goes the Weasel can be swapped out for maybe Monitor and Abuse. And why I would probably switch it out for Monitor and Abuse is because he, when he, in tier 1, he becomes a, he's only a 6 meter terror radius. With Monitor and Abuse, he becomes a no terror radius. So you could sneak up to a survivor, smack him down with Sloppy Butcher, and surprise the hell out of them because they'd be hearing nothing. Say the best for last. If you hit that survivor and it's not your obsession, you get a stack. The more stacks you get, the faster you can smack them. And corrupt intervention so that the three generators don't, uh, that are farther from you don't get worked on very fast. Now, the perk, the two add-ons I'd run on him would probably be J. Myers Memorial or Memorial Flower, or J. Myers, J. Myers Memorial and Hairbone. These are the two add-ons I would probably be running on my Myers because Myers is also so much fun to play. He has a lot of weaknesses that people, especially if you have a, such an open map, he becomes almost worthless. His stock becomes very bad, but it doesn't mean that he's not powerful. If you are able to get to your tier three and keep it for very long, that is amazing. Uh, you could take off uh, monitor and abuse for uh, play with your food. You can take off corrupt intervention for play with your food if you want. Because Myers can give off so much pressure, but he could also be left as a very weak killer. But that's what I would put on my Myers build. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, or changes you'd like to make to my build, comment down below. I'm always reading. Now, next here is the Huntress. And if you guys do not know, I am a heavy Huntress main. Uh, this is the build I will always run on Huntress no matter what. Thanatophobia, so that if I smack someone, there's regression down from 4% to 60%. Barbecue and Chili is almost essential on her. And Iron Maiden, I cannot play a game of uh, a game as Huntress without Iron Maiden. Because Iron Maiden goes extremely well with these the Deerskins gloves, which increase her um, opening lockers and getting more hatchets. Now, Barbecue and Chili works really well with Pop Goes the Weasel. Pop Goes the Weasel. The reason why, if you see a survivor who is extremely far, because we, remember this, guys. Huntress is uh, just slower than the average killer speed. So, if she sees someone further than 40 meters, she knows that she doesn't have to worry about those gens. And uh, any generator that had no one on it that's close, she either doesn't have to worry about or she has to go over and see if Pop Goes the Weasel works. Now, the two add-ons that I would always run would be uh, Infantry Belt and Leather Loop. I love running these two add-ons together. It is extremely fun to have eight hatchets. Or I would have Infantry Belt, Deerskin Gloves, Infantry Belt, and uh, Oak Haft. Even freaking Barris Toxin or Bandaged Haft. There's just so many builds you can do. And But the thing that people mostly do is run Iridescent Head with uh, Infantry Belt so that they have three Iridescent, uh, the three hatchets that are insta down. I, I find this kind of good. I don't I personally don't like running a uh, iridescent head But that is just me. I just don't like it <laughs> But this is the build I would run for my hunters if you guys have any suggestions changes comment Go ahead and comment down below and I'll see and I'll, I'm always reading. I'm always watching reading 
Now next is this big boy Leatherface. Leatherface is nowhere near the strongest killer. And um to make up for that, he has a chainsaw that yeah can hit multiple people, but very rarely you're gonna get more than two downs. Or at least more than two downs from uh with Leatherface. Yeah, so to make up for that, we've got Corrupt Intervention and Discordance. The reason why I have these two together is that no matter where they go, if they bring them closer, it shows me which generators are being worked on as a team. With generators being worked on as a team, that gives you more of a chance of getting more than one survivor with your chainsaw. Pop Goes the Weasel works well so that if they are on that generator and you do down someone, you can quickly pop it and go find someone else. And it's Sloppy Butcher so that they do not, <clears throat> are so that they have to heal slower. The add-ons I would probably be running on him would be Cover a Tuning Guide and the Grease. Or Cover a Tuning Guide, Primer Bulb, or even this and the Chili. <clears throat> That's really it. Nothing else I would run besides his common add-ons that are the Spark Plug and um, Vegetable Oil. Speed Limiter is just for memes. You get more blood points, yeah, but it's really just a meme. But this is the build I would run on my double. If you guys have any changes, suggestions, or comments, go ahead and comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is the Nightmare. Now, Nightmare can be extremely crazy powerful. And this is a build I would run on him because the more, like a corrupt intervention, you could probably swap this out because he can teleport to gens like every uh, 40 something seconds, I think. He could teleport to gens every 30 seconds, my bad. 30 seconds for his power to come back. And Sloppy Butcher and Thanatophobia go together to, so that they heal slower and they have more slower uh, action speed. And with Pop Goes the Weasel, of course, with uh, the ability to teleport to generators, it's great. Corrupt Intervention could be swapped out for either Dying Light or Barbecue and Chili, if you guys would like. That That's just your choice. But I like Corrupt Intervention because it's the best way to slow down generators. The way, and we have two perks that slow down gens and per two perks that slow down healing, which is two perks I or an entire build that I would rather play with. But it, again, this is just my opinion. The add-ons I would run with him would probably be Swing Chains and Outdoor Rope. It could be Swing Chains and probably the Black Box. Or not the Black Box, the uh, Red Paint. Heck, even... Um, I would, there's, a, there's so much you can do with him, but it's also... It, you can, there's so much you could do with Freddy, but there's also a lot that can be weakened for him, by him. Now, I'm not a Freddy main in the slightest, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are who watch me are like a lot of mains of these killers that I don't main. Because remember, I'm a Myers and a Huntress main. I'm sure you guys made like Wraith and Trapper and Billy and all that, but that's not me. But this is the build I would run on Freddy. If you have any comments, suggestions, or changes, go ahead and comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is Miss Amanda Young, or as we love to call her, the pig. Now, she is another stealth killer who is extremely good at getting those easy first hits, which is why Sloppy Butcher and uh, Save the Best for Last come into play. Sloppy so that they heal slower and uh, Save the Best for Last so that it makes us easier to down people. Pop Goes the Weasel so that we can, if we do hook someone, we can go ahead and kick a generator for minus 25%. And Make Your Choice. So that what Make Your Choice does, I know this is probably a lot more of a surprising perk to have on her, but with her not having to be very close to a, a, a hook person and going in for like a crouching going out, if she's able to do that, you could probably switch out maybe Pop Goes the Weasel or Sloppy Butcher for Barbecue and Chili so that this perk becomes a lot more effective. Or even Save the Best for Last for Nurses Calling. Your guys' choice. But I put on this build because I find it is probably one of the better builds for me to run, personally. The the best build, the best to run with her would probably be Combat Straps and Videotape. Those will probably be the two best ones, and they're common and uncommon. I wish they... I, uh, the thing is, a lot of her uh, add-ons are not the worst. I guess, <clears throat> but like, um, Jigsaw, Jigsaw Sketch is probably one of her better, uh, purple add-ons. Tamper Timer only reduces it by like 30 min only 30 seconds, I believe, if I'm correct or not. If not, then probably by a minute or so. I forget. But it's really only those. Like, uh, Amanda's Letter is good, only for this specific, uh, add-ons, and rule set number two is... Oh, it's uh, all right, but remember, if a, if, a, if a decent survivor knows exactly what they're doing, they don't even need to see the auras of the jigsaw boxes. Of course, it's going to take a little longer, but it's really just them running around until finding it, because it's inevitable. They're definitely going to find it. 
But this is a build I would run on Picky. If you have any changes, suggestions, or comments, go ahead and comment down below. I'm always reading. Now, next is Clowny Boy. And this is from my good friend and uncle, Mr. Misanthropy. He told me a lot more of a build that he watched. He said that he runs on his clown since he is a clown main. I'm not a clown main in the slightest. If you guys don't know who Mr. Misanthropy is, go ahead and go ahead and check him out. I'll leave his YouTube right here uh, so you guys can go ahead and check him out. But why I have Spear Fury on is uh, Spear Fury and Brutal Strength, of course, go together. But why on clown, you might ask? Well, I'm going to answer that for you, friends. The reason why is if you are in a chase with someone and they pull down a pallet, if you throw, if you throw down his bottle using the Afterbeast Tonic, which is his ability to slow down chases, while you're breaking that pallet, you break it extremely fast. You break it 20% faster. And you are... Uh, and you are getting more stacks to your Spear of Fury. If they bring it down on you while they are slow, they're going to be running away very slow as you just walk right over to them and smack them. Save the Best for Last is extremely good, and Pop Goes the Weasel goes well with Brutal Strength as well, as Brutal Strength goes with Spear of Fury. But this is the build I would be running on my clown, and for the add-ons I would run on him would probably be Sticky Soda Bottle and Thick Cork Stopper. Or Thick Cork Stopper and Redhead Spinky Finger. These are the two I would mostly be running. Heck, even these two together, um, Starling Feather and cork, Thick Cork Stopper. But this is a build I would most likely be running on my um, clown. But again, I'm not a clown main. This probably looks amazing. This probably looks like Crash. But that's your guys' to the short to, uh, to, to come up with. To comment If you have any comments, changes, or suggestions, comment down below. I'm always reading. i be running on her. will probably be the flute and... Uh, the Katsumori talis Talisman. These are probably the two I would run on her. I don't like running her iridescent add-ons at all. Probably Father's Glasses will be different, but everything else I would normally... Like, Prayer Beads did not need to get changed at all. Prayer Beads was the one that I absolutely loved, and now they changed it. But, of course, we can't change it back unless the devs decide otherwise. This is the build I would run for Spirit. If any of you guys have any suggestions or differences that you would like to make to this build or change, comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is Legion, or Joey. My friend Ted. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the reason here's the build I have for him. We got Sloppy for... Well, Sloppy is extremely crazy on... Uh, Joey or the Legion right here, and you could probably take out whispers or hex third seal for uh, Thanatophobia But why I didn't keep in Thanatophobia is because when you when a lot of people are mending You don't really need to worry about the uh, Thanatophobia because you can automatically get those downs a lot more faster if you know exactly what you're doing Pop goes the weasel of course for gen progression going down and uh, not up and Why I put on the hex third seal it is Trust me, it is the most weirdest perk to put on a killer like this. But when I put it on, I've been doing so much more better. But of course, that's just me. But if you guys do give this a try, I'm pretty sure. If, and if they do cleanse the hex totem, it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good because it's not like a crazy hex perk that's gonna be doing everything like a uh, probably hex ruin or hex devour hope. And of course, whispers so that if you're running in a direction and you, their thing lights up, you know that you're getting ready to get ready to use your fire or frenzy. I have a friend who is a legion main, so he has told me a lot about this. And of course, the add-ons I would probably run on him would most likely be Cold Dirt and Frank's mis mixtape, or, or, or not Susie's, or Joey's mixtape. It'd be one of these two add-ons I would run. Or even uh, freaking, or even the legion pin, or the deface smiley pin. Like, but this is a build I would probably run on Legion. If anything, I could take off the uh, Hexlord Seal and put on the Notophobia, but this, but this is something I would run first beforehand. This is my choice. If you guys have any uh, ideas, suggestions, or changes you want to make to the build, comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is the Plague. She is a very weird killer, not gonna lie. She can be very strong or very, very weak, depending on the survivor experiences if they know exactly what they're doing, or your experience with Plague if you know exactly what you're doing. With Dying Light and Thanatophobia, it is insanely overpowered on Plague. With the Thanatophobia, what I would normally do, what I hear, a lot of, a lot of what Plague people do, or Plague players, 
they would find the first person and immediately get them to broken state and uh, down them right there. That's what I do. That's why Thanatophobia comes in play. Corrupt intervention brings the survivors closer, and if the person you down is not your obsession, you got more uh, penalty and uh, more percentage down to not repairing and healing and all that. Pop Girls the Weasel just in case they get a gen just in case they're on a generator. And with her power, you can vomit on gens, blockers, pallets, windows, whatever, just to make sure that you get it. But if you're playing against a survivor team that is extremely smart, then th this perk right here, Devotee's Amulet, it's probably going to be worthless. It is not going to be good at all if they don't cleanse. So, Ashen's Apple. Ashen's Apple is something I would do. Or even, um... Black Incense. Why I would put on these is because it is pretty good. It's, uh, <laughs> yes, it's pretty good. But I would the reason why I would put on these is because if uh if I do I do start off with one extra corrupt pull of uh, pull of devotion, and if anybody is sick and they do not uh, they do not cleanse, then uh, I can see their aura for up to five seconds every time they vomit, which is extremely good and that's why I would run this perk on her not perk add-on but there are a lot of other perks I would run on her like uh, the w probably blessed apple instead of but it's probably it most likely be these two or or even uh these two these two can be extremely well together or extremely bad against with each other this is the build I would run on my plague. If you guys do have any suggestions or changes to the build you want to make, comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is Ghostface. Now, Ghostface is, of course, another main of my good friend and uncle, Mr. Misanthropy66. Again, go ahead and check him out. He's helped me a lot with these builds. And he is a heavy killer main, especially with Ghostface and B Clown. But I changed up the build a little of what he said. It's kind of like two talents, but also not. So, Sloppy Butcher, Nurse's Calling, and Thanatophobia. These can be so great on Ghostface if you know exactly how to time your power, the Night Shroud. Corrupt Intervention, you could swap this out for something else. Like, uh, probably not. I don't think Barbecue and Chili would work. Probably, um. Whatever you guys want. Probably Sloppy. Not Sloppy Butcher. Probably, um. Enduring or Fire Up or something like. Something crazy like that. Even Ruin if you want. Or Whispers. But this is build is extremely well because Ghostface is another stealthy killer who's able to get those easy first hits, which comes with Sloppy Butcher th and, uh, Thanatophobia. Corrupt Intervention brings them closer to you, and Nurse's Calling, if someone ever heals, you can go ahead and down them. You can probably switch out Corrupt Intervention for Dying Light, which is what a lot of people will do. Now, I'm not a Ghostface main in the slightest, but something I will probably do is put on Night Vision Monocle and Chewed Pen. Either these two, or Chewed Pen and... And probably Telephone Lens. These two uh, add-ons I would probably run normally on him. His iridescent add-ons are decent. The outdoor security s s camera, I don't use at all, but I know how good it is. Ghost face caught on tape is extremely horrible. Unless you automatically always are going to try and lean to get someone, don't even try this add-on. It is not worth your time. But this is the build I would run on my ghost face thanks to my good friend, Misanthropy, Mr. Misanthropy66. Go ahead and check him out. But, yeah, if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or changes you want to make to the build, comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is Big Boy Demogorgon, a killer that I used to play a lot and don't play anymore, sadly. With Corrupt Intervention to bring them all closer, why I put on Monitor and Abuse, here's the good thing. Even though the survivors can still hear his uh, heavy stomps, like a... That really gives them a, gives them away. With monitor and abuse, they they technically can't tell how close you are unless you're going against extremely good survivors or if they see you at all. So the the cool the thing is, Demo Gorgon is one of those killers who gives off a lot of information to survivors. So monitor and abuse can really help him end chases fast. With say the best for last, 
it is extremely good on uh, Demogorgon. If you find your obsession, you could use your power uh, of the Abyss and shred them down, and you're not losing any stacks for shredding them. If you find someone who's not your obsession, smack them twice, and boom, you've got save the best for last uh, stacks without losing any. And Pop goes the Weasel with Sync with a uh, Corrupted Invention if they do do a generator. Now, I haven't been playing this guy a lot ever since, but the, um... What I would normally be running, um, that and, um... This. These two, I would run. Because Rat Liver... Rat liver is extremely good. When you're holding your uh, the abyss, where you're getting ready to charge and uh, shred down someone, his remember his movement speed becomes 92% without this add-on. With this add-on, it adds 9% extra speed, so you're 101, barely faster than the survivor. So you are able to barely catch up to them and choose. You can make a fake. Go ahead and slap him. If it's your obsession, you can uh, fake it as well, and then get closer and smack him down with the shred. There is so much you could do with this guy, but he gives off so much information to the survivors, which is kind of a downfall on his side. But this is the build I would use for Dembo Gork, and if you guys have any suggestions or changes or, or anything you'd like to change or add on to this, comment down below. I'm always reading. Next is the Oni. Now, Oni is those killer. Is I haven't been seeing any Onis ever since the latest uh, chapter. No Oni players have come out of hiding. Everyone's been staying back with Oni. I don't know. I don't know why. But with Oni, I would run Thanatophobia, Sloppy Butcher, and his own perk, Blood Echo. Now, why I would run these? If anybody who's um, uh, injured, sorry, anybody who's injured, they will always drop blood orbs. And blood orbs are what make his power go into what it's supposed to be. Very good. So, now with Sloppy Butcher, it takes a lot more longer to put on, or for them to heal on. And Thanatophobia makes them stay regressed if they are if they stay injured. Blood Echo, if you do hook someone while anyone else is exhausted, this perk will give that person the hemorrhage uh, effect into their healed, and they are exhausted for 45 seconds. And Corrupt Intervention comes into play for bringing them closer to you so that you can smack them earlier. Now, the per the add-ons I would normally run on him would be Renjiro's Bloody Glove and probably Wooden Oni's Mask or even um, a splint Splintered Hole. These are what I would be running on. Those add-ons are what I would run on him. Or I could even put on <clears throat> this or even that or that. These add-ons are extremely well on Oni, because anything that makes him go faster, he could be probably just as fast as uh, Billy, but he'd also be better because he wouldn't be able to bump into anything, he can just go right around it, which Billy can't do. But this is the build I would run on my Oni. Hope, uh, if you guys have any suggestions, changes, or anything you'd like to add on, go ahead and comment down below, I'm always reading. And the last killer is the newest killer in the game, the Deathslinger. So, Deathslinger is pretty popular nowadays. Sloppy Butcher, I put on Sloppy Butcher because it ch goes down with a lot of healing. And uh, the more someone stays in injured, if you do catch, if you are very good with his uh, the Redeemer power, you will dominate teams with this build. Monitor and Abuse goes very well with Sloppy Butcher because you can hit someone with Sloppy and with Monitor and Abuse the, the survivors will almost not know how good you are or how close you are. His base tear radius is 24. So with Monitor and Abuse that's minus 8 so he'll have a 16 tear radius. Which is pretty good. I mean and if you are in a chase it is it goes up to 34 but which is fine cuz chases can be ended very fast with a uh, Demogorgon. Pop goes the weasel stops gen progression and thrilling tremors stops gen progression as well. <laughs> thrilling tremors and pop goes very well together but it's always best to use pop after thrilling tremors not before because thrilling tremors I believe thrilling tremors and corrupt do this. If you do a to if you do uh, like kick a gen and you then hook someone no, not corrupt. Thrilling Tremors does this. If you kick the generator and then hook someone with Thrilling Tremors active, Thrilling Tremors will activate and it will it will stop the generator from uh, de uh, degressing. Which I find extremely stupid. Something I would not do. Now, I would normally run Warden's Key and Tin Oil Can. These two add-ons I love running on him. Tin Oil Can, if you are not the best with his uh, shots, which I'm not, Tin Oil Can is great. 
Warden's Key uh, moderately increases the spear, gu spear gun's reload speed, which is tremendous. It is a heavy game changer. Of course, you can change it. You can change out these add-ons for like maybe pay short cigar. But this can be immediately canceled out if you grab someone and you know they're gonna get off the hook, the uh, spear gun. All you have to do is just lunge at them and boom, you're not getting any stun from the spear at all. Barbed wire increases the survivor's mending time when affected with a deep wound status effect. If they're having to mend, then it's not really gonna matter because you're already already in another chase, or they're running away from you, which is not affecting their uh, wound, deep wound state at all. So these two add-ons can be immediately taken out. Now this. It's like garbage. This is extremely garbage. Unless you unless you want to pair it with monitor and abuse, that's probably the best they can do. But it is horrible. I don't know why it's even here. And prison chain. It is also it's also pretty good. It could probably be uh, replaced with um this tin oil can. But that's pretty much it. <laughs> these are the two add-ons I would run. And and even these these two right here. I would run these if I didn't have these two add-ons. This is okay, I guess. It's not the best, and it's nowhere near the worst. And these two are also very good. Like, all of his common add-ons are a lot more better than his purple add-ons. I don't know why. But, these are my suggestions for builds. Again, if you have any comments you want to change, add, or even, like, simplify the builds, go ahead and comment down below. I'm always reading. But that'll do it for this video guys. If you have enjoyed hit that like button down below subscribe if you're new Go ahead and check out the other youtubers. I've been commenting and uh, saying about in this video and that's it for now Hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace